the thing that we talk about. People say that uh, there is a technical uh, technology evolution, there is a digital revolution. But what we essentially should aim as at is digital value add. So what value we are adding through this digital transformation? So that is where I think the key of demystifying uh, the digital thing will be important. And then of course, cloud of which you guys are expert, we really look forward towards hearing from you. Giving a small brief, brief background and setting up just a context for the audience. I would like to just talk about what happened to whole of the humanity in the last two years. We have been seeing a kind of a disruption unforeseen altogether and unprecedented. One savior which we had was this digital thing. If the economies are intact, if the jobs are intact, if the growth is intact, I think it was the digital transformation which has played a major, major role. Many say it was a knee-jerk reaction for the industry to take that leap. Um, well, I don't agree with that exactly because, well, it was a reaction, but it had to come as a disruptive innovation, requirement of any disruptive innovation to tackle a crisis. And that is where I think the cloud contact center comes into picture and they were set up to handle all such customer communications over the internet. So today's webinar on demystifying digital transformation with cloud contact center is going to be a, a, give us a great insight about what are the various details and what is the perspective in which we are seeing this growth happen. A cloud center, essentially a set of software solutions that provide comprehensive tools and applications that allows brands to connect with customers across multiple channels, such as voice, email, social media, live chat, just to name a few. So how this technology can reach out to the customers and be useful to the customers and to the businesses eventually. So we are going to see that insight uh, from the address of our eminent panelists today. So today's webinar is connected by, and we have speakers from MEO. MEO offers a customer rich solution that is scalable, easy to use, agent friendly, and yet affordable. Frugal, what we say, a frugal innovation. So MOU brings a platform built to solve all the customer experience problems, offers a robust contact center solution, and it enables all the organizations, especially SMEs, to managing in managing their enterprises. So we are very fortunate to have with us Mr. Sachin Bhatia, who is co-founder and head of global sales and marketing at MAO. As the global sales and marketing head, Sachin has been leading enterprise sales and marketing that pursues and cultivates new businesses and has led company to acquire a global footprint in presence of over 60 countries. That's really huge. And we really look forward to hear a very deep and comprehensive uh, thought process from Mr. Sachin Bhatia. Uh, thank you, Sachin, for uh, your availability today, yourself and your team. We look forward to hearing more from you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Over to you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Dr. Ashish Mohan, and thank you, CIA, for this opportunity. And uh, congratulations to the team for pulling off a, a very well thought out webinar. Uh, let me share my screen, and I have a few slides, but I'm going to talk through something with, that is very, very interesting and exciting that is happening. In fact, last 24 hours for our space has been uh, uh, I don't know how many of you saw the DOT regulation change and how many of you are affected by it, but there's a big change that has happened this morning uh, and uh, Prime Minister Modi himself has announced about it. I'll be talk talking about it, though that's not on the slide, but that's something which is fresh out of the oven. Contact centers have existed uh, from the time telephones were invented, right? So, so there was a very obvious thing that if a customer uh, wants to solve a problem uh, or an enterprise wants to reach out the customer remotely, uh, they would call, right? And uh, in calls, the solutions were set up and they were very infra heavy solutions where you would have uh, you know, a bunch of agents sitting somewhere and they are basically handling calls and, and, and collecting data. Uh, typically in a business uh, 
the you know the contact center was looked at as a as a customer service function, which is an ancillary. There's a it's a support function, uh, and hence uh, you know all of us have been in business. It was looked at as cost. But over time, um, <clears throat> and especially due to the pandemic, look at some of the core sales processes, right? How how businesses used to work uh, pre-COVID or pre-pandemic or pre-lockdown. You know, you had various sales channels, you had various support channels, you had uh, you know feet on the street. So, so think of an insurance process, for example. You would you would go out and collect documents. Uh, or think of uh, uh, collections, you will actually go and pick checks. Um, and uh, and there was a lot of this hybrid uh, need, you know, there was need to be in physical touch. But uh, pandemic forced us to think very, very differently because uh, field was not an option, right? It was, uh, it was just not possible. And uh, the most interesting thing happened was that most of these functions, uh, whether it's sales, service, or collections, uh, the contact center actually started driving business through these uh, use cases or through these functions, rather than being just a support center. Right? So that's a big change that has happened in the last uh, 12, 24 months uh, of, you know, the role of the contact center has completely changed from being a support center that it's a must have problem to, uh, it's a must have business enabler, right? So uh, it's still a must have, but people are looking at it more seriously that what all can we now drive from contact center because it's more scalable, uh, you could measure everything and improve. Now, <clears throat> the other thing that became a challenge is even if you have a contact center driving these businesses, your agents could or should be able to work from anywhere. So we were forced into this and yes, people, People found solutions of how to do this, you know, work from home came in. But let's say today, or even one year from now, is, is it an option that you're not uh, remote ready or forget remote ready, you're not remote. So I'll, I'd like to share some data point and this is very specific to India. In India, the cost of infrastructure for a contact center compared to people cost uh, that is spent, it's 25%, right? And, um, uh, and the gross margins in a contact center function is about 10 to 12 percent. So what if what if the infrastructure cost is uh, you know, an infrastructure means the cost of seat, the you know electricity, internet? What if you could you could do do this remote, right? So uh, most most of the businesses that we work with have figured out that hey, you know actually remote is working out better and there is higher gross margin, and then there are additional advantages of uh, uh, of folks being able to hire anyone, you could now think of hiring folks who couldn't work. Think of people with special abilities. Think of retired army professionals. Think of think of housewives who can spend three five hours, uh, and it is no longer needed that this is only a freshers game, right? So there are these two three areas where uh, disruption has happened in how people think about those problems, and hence we believe that contact centers are going to stay remote. Or in a hybrid model, you know, you can onboard people in office and then they can work from anywhere and then they, they come in together for training and fun, but you don't need infrastructure to run the contact center. Uh, and at the same time, uh, you could also do this from the cloud. So I'm going to talk about that. But there was one big bottleneck to this uh, that, you know, India has progressed in. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the innovation in India around, uh, uh, around data, you know, what Geo has done and every, the data has become ubiquitous what UPI has done and payments, you know, the cashless economy is completely thriving and India is like top notch. I think on the telecom regulations, uh, India was a little behind and the government has taken some very progressive steps over the last few months. But this morning, I think there's a regulation uh, uh, or there's a guideline from DOT on what is known as the OSP regulation. I'm not sure uh, how many of you are aware of it, but that means that you could now put your infrastructure anywhere and your agents can log in from anywhere and you don't have to apply for any licenses for that. And that is huge for an Indian government to say that you don't need a license. That's an extremely progressive step. Uh, this is this morning's news. We are still deciphering it and we'll be doing a webinar exclusively to decode what does the change in guideline mean. So if this is of 
interest, uh, you know, uh, keep watching the space. But we believe remote is not an option. The government is very progressive. So the regulations have been eased out. So there is no point in uh, in planning a, a location based contact center, right? Uh, you could actually hire people from tier two, tier three, uh, language specialists anywhere, uh, uh, people with different profiles, and they can work remotely in a contact center as if you would have ra ran a secure uh, a facility in your office. <clears throat> we had surveyed, uh, uh, you know, this survey is about four four months old. On uh, if you if you want to go remote, what are the top challenges, or what is the most critical challenge? And there were typically three challenges, you know, IT governance and security, which means, uh, you know, in a in an office environment, if an agent in a contact center has a problem, he raises his hand, you know, an IT guy keeps rushing in. But if an agent sitting at home says, hey, I'm not able to handle calls, something's wrong. Do you trust the device? Do you trust the network? Or do you trust the agent, right? How do you solve that problem? So that was the biggest problem. The second, second problem was onboarding and collaboration. If new people are coming in, how would you onboard them? Because this is very, you know, the the culture in a contact center, people people watch and learn, you know, how is this handled and then they learn. So, which means a, a, a solid onboarding program and a collaboration where a subject matter expert can be brought in. And the third is how we are monitoring operations, right? There used to be people boards uh, in contact centers where people are seeing how many calls are in queue. Um, but uh, and most of the most of the KPI reporting is happening on a on the day end basis. But how do you now make it real time for everyone so that if if some resource uh, needs to be rescheduled, if uh, if an agent needs to know, man, I need to wrap up my calls. If some of you are from the contact center, all that should happen from home. So these were the three top challenges that came out of which IT governance security was the biggest challenge. Uh, yeah, so, so I, we talked about this. So uh, another problem around this was security that, um, uh, you know, a lot of lot of these uh, contact centers uh, have sensitive data. Uh, how do you make sure that you're only able to look at what you are talking to right now and, and able to monitor and see who did what? So uh, how do you make sure there's recording available and stuff like that, right? So those were the biggest inhibitors of people uh, thinking remote long term, long term, right? Now I'll talk very briefly about uh, Ameo Cloud Contact Center and we have a little bit of demo uh, and we'll try and show you some cool capabilities which which will allow you to go remote uh, without infrastructure at all. So you could actually go remote tomorrow if you want to. Um, most, most contact centers require flexibility around uh, uh, what the business process would look like, how do you want to route calls or interactions, which channels should be handled by which agent. Uh, and most legacy infrastructure, you know, is is broken because you would have, uh, you know, siloed tools, you would have chat handled somewhere else and phone handled somewhere else. And these days you even have channels like WhatsApp uh, and, and and there might be an app on which you're answering it. So, so moving away from legacy, uh, seems to be the biggest use case that people are uh, coming to us for, uh, uh, of course, remote ready. So you are on cloud, you could log in from home, you could log in from office, you could uh, you could do security like a VPN, uh, go omni channel, so add, keep adding channels as and when you require or maybe on day one and decide which agents will handle what channels. And then uh, contact center is never standalone. You would have a business application or a CRM. So when the call comes in and let's say, uh, you know, my team member Mansi is calling. What would be the information? Is it a billing information? All that coming from the backend systems can be integrated, and so that the agent does is not scouting and pressing all tab and you know finding information everything in in one unified screen. And we'll try and show you some of that. In terms of channels, uh, uh, Ameo is uh, ahead of the game. Uh, whatever channels uh, a customer can come from, and we when we say customer, this is for a B2C company, right? Uh, email, SMS, voice, live chat, uh, some some new social media messaging channels like uh, Viber, WeChat, uh, WhatsApp, Instagram now, uh, or within your mobile app uh, or Google Play. You know, uh, if you have an app, people might be leaving feedback there or questions there. And then Facebook uh, Messenger as well as Facebook page and Twitter DM as well as Twitter handles. When people are coming to you, you could actually 
collate and distribute those interactions depending on which agent is responsible for what and who can handle what expertise. You get one single view of customers. So if Mansi came via a call this morning and she has now sent a WhatsApp message, we are able to uh, decipher and give you one single view of, hey, this is this is what the customer has been doing. So agent can actually uh, be in context. He's no longer asking, uh, I'm X, Y, Z, how can I help you? He's saying, hey, Mansi, I see that you have uh, interacted with us on WhatsApp about a refund. I can tell you that the status is this. And even before Mansi says a word, the agent has actually resolved the issue. Uh, the the architecture is completely based on uh, microservices, not relevant for you, but essentially we can scale. You want one agent today and 10,000 agents tomorrow. We could scale seamlessly uh, and uh, the flexibility around costs also is there. So there's no nothing for you to think. Uh, we have set up data centers and telco infrastructures across the country uh, and are the largest cloud contact center player in India today. Uh, uh, and uh, we also follow PCI DSS. So if, if there's sensitive information or uh, uh, PCI DSS compliant card information, right? We could also handle that, uh, retract or detract that information, uh, encrypt voice logs and stuff like that. Anyways, that's a lot of detail. Uh, we if, during the pandemic, uh, one of the challenges that came in is that some of the work from him agents didn't even have a laptop at home. So we now have a mobile application that serves as a full call center application for the agent. So you could actually take calls, uh, uh, you know, handle calls on WebRTC, which means on IP, and you could also predictive dialing. I know how many of you might, might be aware, but predictive dialing is the fastest way to do outbound calls. You could handle all uh, all mediums the way you would, you would handle in a laptop thing. But that's quite big because all your agents need now is a mobile app to log into the system and they are, you know, as soon as they log in, they start getting calls, uh, uh, you know, from your contact center with CTI application. So if you have, if you have backend data and you want to present it in the mobile app when the call comes in, uh, that is also possible. Yeah, so it's a portable agent uh, workbench. Uh, all activities are recorded uh, and it's very, very simple. You just go to Play Store and uh, download an app. Uh, I think it's available on Google Play right now. Uh, there is a there's a version that we are working for iPhone, but we see an overwhelming big use case for uh, Android applications there. Okay, now we have a brief demo uh, where we want to show you the capabilities uh, very, very quickly, maybe two complete fl flows. And, and the folks who are giving the demo uh, are from our solution engineering team, solutions team. They are sitting at home and uh, they are logging into a browser and using the same application. So there's no infrastructure where they are located. Everything is on cloud. And uh, we'll just see how simple a phone call and a WhatsApp interaction is going to be. Over to you, Anubhuti. Thank you, sir. Mansi, can you share me uh, the sharing light? Yeah, thank you. Let me just quickly share in my screen over here. So first I will be taking you through the agent interface that how agent interface look like, and then I will be showcasing you the supervisor interface. So the screen which you are able to see, it's a web based application. The agent just need to call a web URL, and then he is good to go log in his user ID and the password. The same platform also support multiple languages in place. So the setup supports English, Arabic, Japanese, different language. So the entire screen gets changed into the specific language which got selected. So over here, I have already entered my user ID and the password. The moment agents logs in, the system asks to select the campaign. So the same platform used to support interaction as in channel, chat as in channel, voice as in channel, and the video as in channel. So with respect to voice, the agent either uh, logging himself into a single campaign or multiple campaign at the same time. So that is a selection which is being provided to the agent. The moment agent logs in the application, he will be able to see his dashboard that how many interactions are being assigned to him, what all are the medias, what are the different sources. So with the help of the icons, he will be able to see whether it's a WhatsApp request, voice call request, email request, Twitter, Facebook, right? Similarly, he will also be able to access his knowledge base. So within the knowledge base over here, you can see that we have configured a new website over here. Similarly, it can be a brand website which can be uh, configured over here. So if this supports any web based URL, which is cycling supported. So let me just quickly showcase you that how uh, in call 
uh, inbound call can be routed to the live agent. So I'm just going to initiate one call from my mobile number. So I'll just showcase you whenever a customer is making an inbound call, what kind of notification we are providing to the agent. So agent is able to see that there is a call waiting in queue. There was a there was a beep sound as well, which will help the uh, agent to uh, hear it out that there is an incoming call because there can be a possibility that agent is not uh, over the same browser. So with the help of this uh, incoming call, the beep sound, he will be notified that there is an incoming call. This is the customer number. This is under this queue. This call has been received. And on the other side, we also send him the notification that there is an incoming call so that he can wrap up his current call and can be available for the next incoming call. On the right hand side, this is a telephony widget uh, which is being visible. So over here, agent is able to see that from which number this call is coming. What is the campaign name, queue name? What is the DID this customer has dialed out? And rest of the functionalities like hold, mute. He can take uh, other users, you know, conference calls. So it can be a different user. It can be a specific mobile number. It can be field agent number or it can be the supervisor number. Similarly, he can even initiate a transfer, transfer to a user, transfer to IVR, like feedback IVR, uh, payment gateway IVR can also be integrated. It can be transferred to a different mobile numbers. I will be able to see uh, my senior person's number over here. So directly with the help of a single click, I will be able to initiate some transfer. On the other side, towards the left hand side, the agent is able to see the customer quick summary, that what is the customer number, what is the recent order this customer has placed? What is the delivery date which is going to be in place? And below this, there are number of tickets, number of interactions this customer has done before. Right? So I can see that there are three interactions which are there in place. Two were via voice call, and there was a recent transaction, uh, recent conversation which this customer had via WhatsApp. So even I will be able to select the uh, request so that I can see that what all conversation has been happened in past. So the complete conversation history will be provided to the agent in place. So you can see that under which queue this request has been received, uh, what was our previous conversation. So those complete details we are providing on the uh, agent screen. Uh, side by side, there can also be a possibility. Let's suppose the, this agent is connected over a call and there are other customers also, those who are trying to reach out, right? So there are multiple options which can be provided to the customer. Please hold the line. We will not see you shortly. Press 1 to receive the WhatsApp chat link on the same mobile number or press 2 to schedule call back on the same mobile number as press 3 to continue. So, wait. So, you have heard that if a customer is trying to reach out uh, to the agent, right? And if agents are busy, then different options can be provided to the caller. Either he can opt for a WhatsApp agent communication or a callback, or he can just wait for the agent availability, right? Uh, in that case, uh, I'm audible. Yeah. So in that case, the WhatsApp notification is being sent to the customer. So I've just initiated uh, this WhatsApp uh, that I just want to have a WhatsApp conversation. So side by side, there was a WhatsApp notification which has been sent to me uh, from this brand that I have just read this Amio customer care. Do you want to continue the conversation over WhatsApp? Then I can just reply back. So this was the scenario which I have to showcase you that there can be an idea deflection in place. So if there is a huge volume coming in place, then you can bifurcate two different channels. So from the IVR, I have redirected customer to a WhatsApp as a channel. On the other side, the agent was able to see the complete conversation which has happened with this customer in past. And uh, uh, once the conversation has been completed, right? Or once he has seen that what all conversation this customer had uh, earlier, we will also be able to see the CRM. So this is the CRM which we have provided. So within the CRM, the agent is able to see the current order status of this customer and even the previous order history is being visible to this agent. So either, so this is the AVO CRM in place, but if you want that, if you already have some CRM, that can also be integrated. There are multiple CRM in market like uh, Salesforce, Microsoft, LeadSquare. So those CRMs can also be integrated over here. Once a conversation has been completed and agent want to dispose the call, then he can dispose directly from here. So these are some quick dispositions which are being provided and there are some dispositions which are being configured over here. So as per the conversation, he can select that whether the order has been confirmed or it was cancellation request or a refund request. So that catching can be selected and accordingly he can save and dispose. Or if customers say that, no, please call me back uh, after two hours, then there is a follow-up or callback which can be selected. 
where the agent will be able to specify the date and time that what time which callback need to happen. So let's suppose after two hours, I can specify the time. Either I can schedule a callback on the same number or an alternate number of this customer. While in conversation, if agent needs some assistance from a senior person, from supervisor or from a study, we have provided this internal chat feature where he will be able to see the list of the users, those who are logged in. So he can do the one-to-one -one conversation or he can just take a help from the supervisor. Or if you want to see that what all messages has been broadcasted by the supervisor side, that will also be visible. So that is an internal chat feature which we have provided to the agents while uh, over a call, if they need any assistance, they can take help from here. So I have disposed this call as in callback. Uh, I'll just showcase you that how uh, if a call is getting disposed as in callback, uh, then how the agent will be able to see. So over this notification bell icon, uh, there's a callback in next five minutes or 10 minutes, there will be a notification which will be coming over here. On the other side, the agent will be able to access this call details section. He can use this filter that I can select the specific campaign, let's say for today, uh, under this campaign, how many callback has been uh, made. So those filters have been provided. Even I can just fetch the call history that how many calls I have made from this campaign, right? So I can select the campaign, I can select the time duration, and I will be able to listen to the call recording. Even I will be able to see uh, that what kind of uh, conversation I have done, whether it was an inbound call, outbound call, and even I can play the recording from here. So this was the voice conversation which I have showcased you. Similarly, if customer wants to reach out to you via WhatsApp as in channel, so similarly, there will be a WhatsApp uh, that can be routed to the agent. So this is the customer Anubhuti who has just initiated WhatsApp. The agent will be able to see that what is the source of this WhatsApp request, uh, I mean the chat request. The complete conversation will be visible. Uh, if agent wants, he can either initiate a transfer to user, transfer to conference. So there are multiple queues in place that will be visible to the agent. If you want to see the previous uh, conversation history or how many interactions this customer had before, then he will be able to see that these are the interactions which are being generated. If I want to have a, a detailed view of this customer, that can also be done. So the previous conversation history is being visible to me. And if I want to link this conversation, then I can simply click over here. That's the same customer, same requirement. So I can link the request. And once the conversation has been completed, similar to the voice, I will be able to dispose the request from here. So this request has been disposed. And uh, so this was the scenario which I have showcased you that how customers are able to reach out to the agents or the uh, call center. Similarly, uh, if agent have the update and he want to reach out to the agent, uh, to the customer, that he will be able to select the request. So let's suppose this is the request which I have just initiated over here. So I will be able to uh, uh, select this request and a complete conversation history will be provided. So it will take uh, uh, three to five seconds time to load the previous conversation over here. Let me just open uh, one of the existing requests. Okay. I think uh, some issue with my internet, just one second. Okay, so the complete conversation is uh, here over the screen that what conversation has been done between the agent and the customer. Now, if agent want to reach out to the uh, customer, then there is a continuous chat option which is being provided to the agent. So once you click over here, then again, he will be able to see the same chat request uh, which got initiated by the customer side. And whatever response uh, agent is sending, that will be uh, visible to the customer in a real time that these were the conversation or these were the messages signed by this particular brand. So this was the agent screen uh, which I have to showcase you. Now let me just quickly take you through the supervisor that how supervisor will be able to monitor the agents. So it's the same web portal for the supervisor. Anubhuti, just one second. So what you witnessed, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that you know uh, today WhatsApp is a very powerful channel. You know, imagine that you have sent a notification to your prospect on or a customer on let's say a due date reminder or or let's say your ticket has been booked the customer can actually initiate a conversation from there itself it's extremely extremely convenient for the customer to just start typing in the whatsapp window and uh, you at the back end are able to distribute those interactions to your agents and respond back 
and this is available across medium so your agent same agent could be handling whatsapp voice chat like anubhuti just showed us which gives you tremendous power to open up channels and and still not increase cost uh, uh, you know for your uh, for your agents right otherwise either the life of an agent becomes very difficult that he is going into a whatsapp application and resolving and there's no record of it you can actually distribute and stuff like that go ahead uh, anubhuti yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was just checking you through the supervisor interface. So this is a supervisor interface where he will be able to select the campaign which he wants to monitor. So either he can do a live monitoring where he can see that how many uh, agents are logged in in place. Towards the left hand side, I can be able to see a quick summary that these agents are logged in, these many agents are on break or they are uh, connected over a live call. With respect to customers, if there are customers waiting in queue, that they are waiting for the agent availability, that, that count can be seen over here. And accordingly, the supervisor will be able to take a quick action whether he needs more agent to assign under this campaign or not, right? And with respect to calls, the supervisor will be able to have a quick summary that how many calls they have received under this campaign, how many were inbound, how many were manual dials, or how many were callbacks. Towards the agent screen, he will be able to see if there is an agent who is over a live call, then basic functionalities like snow, bars, whisper are being provided. So supervisor will be able to silently listen to the conversation. He can monitor his agent whether they are doing good or not. This is really helpful if there is a new person who has joined your team, then you can monitor that particular user and even you can provide the assistance as well. With respect to the dashboard, the supervisor will be able to monitor the dashboard either for last 30 minutes, one hour or 24 hours duration, where he will be able to see that how many calls has happened so far, how many inbound calls we have received, uh, what is the abundant rate over the ACD, right? Uh, we are also able to monitor the SLA, whether what percent of SLA we are able to achieve, how many calls are getting connected, how many calls are getting abandoned, right? So that quick summary uh, is being provided to the supervisor. With respect uh, to an uh, outbound campaign, right? So I can select the outbound campaign over here. There are multiple configurations which is being provided to the supervisor that either uh, the supervisor will be able to see the calls that has happened so far. He will be able to listen to the call recordings. Even he will be able to rate the calls. So on basis of certain parameters, supervisor can rate the call. Uh, so if you want to rate the call quality, if you want to rate the agents, that can also be done. So those parameters can be configured. Similarly, there is a lead management which is being provided. So multiple contexts can be uploaded in a lead. Anytime you can enable or disable the lead, you can configure the time window that what time zone you want to make the calls happen. Similarly, if you want to have some filters, some conditions to be applied, let's suppose you have uploaded 10,000 of record, but out of those record, you want to dial customers on a basic condition. So let's say if it is a uh, delivery process, right? E-commerce sector. So all the customers also have placed the order like uh, COD. So you want to take a confirmation from the customer that uh, is it this order is confirmed or not? We are ready for the delivery. Are you at home? So such kind of checks you can make. So if anyone who has placed the order like COD, so those contexts will only be getting dialed. So you are just filtering out data on basis of certain conditions. So those are the filters which can be used. And if it is an open captain, then definitely we do provide multiple algor uh, algorithms in place. Those are like preview, predictive, progressive. Predictive is a smart algorithm which uh, used to dial on the basis of the pacing ratio. That what pacing you want to maintain, how many call drops are being allowed at a time. And if the call drops are getting increased, then uh, automatically this system is smart enough to reduce the pacing as per the requirement. Right? So those are the features which are being provided. And uh, if I talk about the supervisor, then definitely the supervisor will be able to fetch the reports. Uh, so reports are the something which provide you a final outcome that what all uh, calls has happened so far, what all uh, productivity, uh, productivity which uh, we have with respect to the agents. So from this report section, you will be able to fetch it out. So multiple reports are being provided. So let me just showcase you that how supervisor will be able to fetch the report. So you can select the report. These are the different output format which you can select. Either you can fetch report for a specific time frame or for current duration. So that current month, quarter, year can be selected. You can select the campaign for which you want to fetch report. Queue selection is being provided. And whether you want some graphical representation report or not. So multiple filter parameters can be selected. And within few seconds, report will be fetched out, which will provide you a quick glimpse 
that what all are your uh, is my screen visible this report yes okay so these are the reports uh, like acd called report that these are five uh, bottom five campaigns under which we have average qa time these are my top five campaigns under which we are receiving maximum calls and a detailed view is being provided that uh, from which customer number we have received the request what was the did this customer has dialed out who was the user who got connected so my uh, detailed monitoring can also be done from this screen uh, coming back to the screen, uh, so the same uh, application which I have showcased you uh, for the agent, which is a web-based portal, the same agent can also log in uh, using a mobile phone. So we do also have a work from home mobile app. And within that, with respect to the supervisor, we used to provide a smart monitoring. So even if your agents are logging uh, from home, the supervisor will be able to monitor those users. So there is a different uh, dashboard which is being provided, especially for work from home scenario that the supervisor will be able to monitor that how many calls has happened so far, who all agents are logging, what is the device they have used, whether it is OnePlus mobile, Samsung mobile, what mobile they have used, and uh, what is the extension they have selected, how many calls they have done, whether they are facing any issue with respect to network or battery. So those are auto detected issues which we are able to find it out and accordingly the supervisor will be able to take the actions. So uh, that was all which I just quickly wanted to uh, demonstrate you within this session. Uh, Sachin sir, if you would like to add something, go ahead. Oh, thanks Anubhuti. As always, it's a pleasure listening to you in such a short span of time you were able to cover and I'm sure it was uh, enjoyed. and. If you find it overwhelming, uh, gentlemen, ladies, we can uh, we can do a detailed demonstration for you guys. Today, we just wanted to show some of the capabilities on channels and also that this has been designed for remote, right? So we're even able to see that on the agent side, if there's any network failure, automatically the routing can be changed. You will be able to see whether the agent's network is okay or not. So thanks, Anubhuti. You can stop the share now. If there are questions, okay. we can take them. We can take them now. Uh, I already saw uh, a couple of questions and took the liberty of answering them on chat. So we have Chandak from Everest Probe, and he, I, I think he, he had the very analyst view question, right? He said that if you have already invested in on-premise infrastructure, uh, would we be able to salvage the, the cost invested or uh, do we need to rip and replace? And the answer uh, is always, it depends. However, if you have heavily invested and you continue to pay recurring charges uh, on maintenance, you know, whether it's IT or annual maintenance of those licenses or infrastructure, then actually there is a very, very good reason to rip and replace. Uh, if not, let's say the, the PBX and everything is also running on that infrastructure, you could take those calls into cloud uh, or you could, you could, I mean, also as a hybrid architecture. So you could have application database in cloud and you could have the media gateway at the at the premise and we could take the calls to the cloud and uh, and take it to the agent sitting anywhere in india so all options are available uh, uh, ameo has cloud uh, uh, as a default option but ameo is also very very strong on the on prem hybrid side uh, and some of the largest deployments in india uh, one of the leading banks their collections process i think about 9000 agents are using uh, ameo byju's is completely running on ameo uh, there was a slide on uh, logos, but I didn't cover it. Uh, this was not a sales presentation, but uh, any scale starting from five seats to you know, 10,000 seats, we can handle it on a mail. Any other questions from anyone? Let me just uh, bring back my slides again. Uh, can, can I be provided the share rights? And perhaps Sachin, we can also take the questions towards the end if you like, whatever yeah. way you like. Yeah, no, the, so uh, most of what we wanted to uh, cover uh, okay. is done, right? So uh, we we but just thought that it'll, it'll, it'll not be it'll not be interesting if we keep stretching. So uh, yeah. some of the and things. No, no, it was very, okay. Yeah. So uh, you know you you have the modern uh, modern companies. I, I call them modern consumer tech companies. They think differently. So you have Ola, Swiggy, uh, Zomato, Baiju's running on Amio. You also have the most traditional companies that you can think of, HDFC Bank. Uh, though uh, you know they are transforming very very fast. Uh, 
Motila Low Swall Securities, one of our first enterprise customers and very forward looking enterprise, you know, uh, so a strong CIO organization. So we have customers ranging in all uh, verticals and sizes. Uh, so talk to us if, uh, if cloud is something that you are thinking. And the one final point on the regulation change that I mentioned, uh, we plan to do a detailed uh, deciphering uh, session on what does the new guideline mean for enterprises you know uh, how seamless would it be to to have a remote without a, a, you know a, a vpn infrastructure and have some very dedicated infrastructure can you just run it on uh, on public cloud right so there's going to be a webinar uh, organized over the next two weeks uh, you can get in touch with the organizers here or you can just follow ameo on linkedin uh, i put in the url and we'll be announcing those things uh, uh, very, very soon, right? This is this morning's news. Otherwise, I would have added those slides here, but you and we haven't decoded it fully, but it's very forward looking and very promising. With that, uh, let me thank uh, Dr. Ashish Mohan, CII, the whole team. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, we are open. The floor is open. Please ask any questions if you have. If you would be interested in exploring Ameo, uh, just uh, approach us on our website or, or just reply to an email that you will get after the webinar and we would be happy to arrange uh, a discovery call for you guys. Thank you so much for the time and attention. Yeah, second, we have a question yes, from Vidya Sagar. Uh, they're asking, how can we assure the security system for Ameo application? Sure. So, so this question has two parts. First is on the Ameo's infrastructure. How are we ensuring security? So, so Ameo uh, has all the facilities that we have on cloud uh, are PCI DSS certified, and we also do a VAPT uh, test and guarantee that, right? So, so there's a regular VAPT, uh, which is vulnerability assessment and penetration testing on our cloud platform. Uh, the providers on our side are mostly Amazon and Oracle uh, for all the data. So there is then security available with those guys. And then you, if you want an end-to-end -end security, we could even do a VPN to your, uh, to your VPN side and make sure that the end-to-end -end data is completely encrypted. Even on public cloud, all calls, everything, all data that is traveling on, uh, on SSL, so everything is encrypted, then reaching the Ameo server. And then if you're basically downloading reports, then it's basically un, uh, you know, decrypted at your end. So even on WhatsApp, uh, uh, you know, the end to end conversation only it gets opened at the Ameo end and then so the, nobody can decipher in between that what's happening. Right? So uh, talk to us uh, if security is a concern, uh, we will answer those concerns in detail by showing you what we have done on the cloud. Nancy, are there any other questions? Not at the moment. Yeah, Sachin, I had a curiosity. I'm not sure whether I know the subject and the kind of detail that you know. And first of all, excellent presentation. Serious. Thank you. Your presentation and then uh, the demos that you showed, very interactive, very useful, insightful. Thank you. Um, I had a curiosity to know that let us suppose uh, uh, a company or institution deploys the solution uh, but has to face multiple litigation compliance requirements from different of its branches, some working in US, let us say, a typical MNCs, right? So will there be a central system to, uh, to cater to such requirements or how, how such a situation is generally tackled when the compliance is different but the Customer requirements mean more or less same and similar. Yeah. So, so most of the time, the compliances are associated with uh, how data can be handled uh, in each geography. So, for example, uh, uh, if you're a, if you're an organization which is handling customer data in Europe and customer data in India, then the Europe customer data has to reside in Europe because of the GDPR uh, compliance, right? And then the India data has to reside in India. So you could have a distributed system which is handling it. Ameo has uh, today presence in 60 countries with its cloud contact center, and most of uh, most of the countries where you have multiple, uh, like US, uh, uh, in Europe we have a couple of data centers, whole of Africa, Southeast Asia, Middle East. So we could handle it case by case, and these are usually enterprise requirements. So we could even have a private cloud network set for them so that their data in US remains in US and. 
uh, data in uh, Europe stays. It's mostly around data, the compliance requirements, right? Most of the other things, uh, for example, in US, there is a policy of how many times you can call somebody from a contact center, right? Those are all configurable in the product. So when you have a US campaign, you could actually put a number that uh, don't try more than once and don't try uh, in these many hours and stuff like that. So all that automation is uh, fairly easy to do through AMAO. I know, uh, yeah, and that's, uh, so uh, there are already a lot of customers who use us across, uh, uh, you know, geographies on a single platform. So uh, uh, something that we can definitely handle. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Great. I think we 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 can wrap it up if there are no more questions. And uh, uh, once again, congratulations to all the organizing team. I I, I had fun sharing thoughts with you. And uh, thanks to the CII team also. Looking forward to do this again with you guys. Uh, yeah, definitely, Sachin. It was our privilege, our uh, uh, our benefit actually that we had uh, interaction from you and Anubhuti, uh, who actually presented very well. I think we had a very solid technical presentation from you guys, and that is why uh, we could actually meet the timeline window as well. So you see, when we talk about sense, we talk to the point we are within the time. So the meetings, which actually makes sense. So wonderful. Uh, from the side uh, of the organizers, uh, uh, I, I would definitely like to acknowledge the work which Divya and Namita, and I'm sure Mansi and Uhuti also from your side would have. Uh, so I think a very useful webinar. Once again, thank you, Sachin, for giving us a wonderful insight on this subject. As a next uh, um, follow-up, I think we must uh, engage towards what can be the prospective dimensions we can draw in terms of connecting you with the institutions which need these facilities. We sure. can also conduct some kind of a, a typical workshops if you are available for them. Happy to, uh, happy to engage, is, Ashish. I think CIA is a platform which is very well established and uh, Amayo is happy to be associated with the brand. Hey, by the way, somebody asked the question: If is is this suits for call center only or fit for production centers? Uh, I'm not sure if I get the question, but anybody who's engaging with it doesn't need to be the department doesn't need to be called a contact center. If you have somebody who's regularly reaching out to customers or a customer reaching out to someone across these mediums at scale, you could handle it. Yeah, Ashish, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I think uh, I was just uh, submitting my. Uh, kind of vote of thanks. Uh, if there's any further question you would like to take, it would be a pleasure. So there was just there was just one question that I think we missed. So we we thought we'll make it worthwhile for Mr. Vidya Sagar who has asked the Absolutely. question. Thank you. Great session. Great. Then let us take it forward from this point. This should be a great yeah. starting point. Engaging with institutions, incubation centers, and institutions which need it. That would be our and actions. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Namaskar everyone. See ya. Take care. Bye.